Hello everybody, I'm Laura Bella, your soulmate expert and Asian matchmaker. Welcome to tonight's episode of Matchmaker Secrets where we talk about love, dating, and relationships, and of course, matchmaking. So most of the time, our guests are usually uh, women, but you know, we're just so lucky to have a gentleman's perspective on dating in Chicago uh, here tonight. So um, Samuel Pizzo is one of Chicago's premier menswear designer and stylist for bespoke suits and elevated casual wear. He has worked with over a thousand clients, including C-suite execs, athletes, music artists, and social media personalities. So hello, how are you? Hi, Lori. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. So let's just start the ball rolling because like, you know, uh, this is exciting because as I was saying, most of the time we are inviting women. But um, so what do you think about the real dating scene in Chicago? Being single of yourself, like you have seen a lot. Yeah, uh, Chicago's a great place to date. Probably one of the top two or three places in the United States for dating. We have amazing restaurants, museums. There's no shortage of things to do and there's no shortage of beautiful people to date. So it's a good place. Oh my goodness, that's great. So um, what specifically are you looking for in a woman? Well, I'm not going to be your typical guest, not just in the fact that I'm a man, but uh, I am a Christian and my faith in Jesus Christ, as I believe I've mentioned to you before, is extremely important to me. It's the most important thing to me. So when it comes to expectations, uh, someone's going to have to align with me when it comes to my beliefs, my faith, and my love for Jesus or they're not going to be happy with me, and I'm probably not going to want to be with them either. Okay, that's, that's uh, you know, understandable. Because, like, you know, if that's a priority in your life, you want to make sure that you're aligned with the person. Yeah. Because otherwise, like, you know, you're just going to have a lot of difficulties, you know, trying to uh, conv have a conversation at least. And so, so when yeah. do you actually ask that? Like, you know, are you specifically, like, you know... Uh, Believing in Jesus Christ, do you ask that? Well, I mean, it's just so evident in who I am, the way that I carry myself. It's not something, it's not like a part of my ID card, right? It's part of who I am. So if someone spends time with me, they're going to know that I'm a believer in Jesus because I talk about him all the time and I treat people in a way that reflects that. So I don't think it's something that I'm necessarily going to have to like ask them. They'll be able to notice that about me. And so... Um, do I ask the question? I think I'll be able to see that like-mindedness in a believer as well. So it's not something that I have to ask. I think it comes to the forefront. Okay. So does that mean that, you know, um, more or less uh, you're also, uh, you know, on the eye for women who are in the church? I mean, yeah, it's a good place to find women who may believe the same thing as you, right? Okay. Um, yeah, and I've dated women that I've gone to church with. Uh, right now, I'm just focused on being the best version of myself. I know that's cliche, but like doing and being what God has placed in my hands and the people that come into my life, if I find that someone is moving in the same direction, I'm open to it. It's like I'm just chasing so hard after Jesus that when I find a woman who's chasing just as hard after him, I'm going to grab her hand. Okay, so like... Um I'm just wondering, when you're saying that you are, um, you know, uh, more or less interested with people who are, um, I should say, religious, yeah. so uh, do you consider yourself conservative as far as, like, you know, it, women, you know, most of the time, like, they want to be dressing like, you know, uh, sexy, so how does that work for you? <laughs> I mean, I, I'm a man, and I want woman to, a woman to be expressive and I love beautiful women so I mean as far as like how they present themselves I just want them to respect themselves right dress in a way that is respectful of who you are as a daughter in Christ because I'm going to respect you that way so I just want you to have the same level of respect for yourself now um, I hope that answers your question, but I think that's the best way that I can explain yeah, it. Yeah, because like, you know, uh, fashion is always changing. And so like, yeah. you know, the it, it, repeat and repeat, like, you know, those penis skirts and then like, those scrap shirts, you know, they're, right. they're going back and forth all the time. And so like, you know, I have no idea, you know, being, uh, you know, Christian yourself, like, you know, that affects you, like, you know, how the woman dresses herself. 
Yeah, I think what, like the way that you present yourself, whether it's me wearing an outfit like this or a woman wearing like a beautiful dress or skirt, it's like what you portray or put out to the world is a reflection on how you feel about yourself on the inside or you want the world that you, uh, to see that you feel about yourself on the inside. So I, I definitely am going to look to women who have a beautiful sense of style because like that's how I present myself. And so I see myself being with someone who also cares about those things and puts attention to it. So yes. Okay, so um, I haven't asked this, but um, I'm just curious because like, you know, um, I seldom do I come across like men who are highly uh, religious so do you value those people with their natural beauties or are you okay with you know those people would have uh, body enhancements oh uh, <laughs> that's a good question I guess I haven't thought about it and we're getting to a place in the world where it's becoming difficult to tell I'm certainly not going to like dismiss someone if they have had surgery done or an enhancements done no if they look beautiful and they feel good about the way that they look and yeah, I'm open to it. Okay, that's, that's you know, a good answer because like I just want to find out, like, you know, everybody has their own perspective. And right. of course, like, you know, I have to ask because like, you know, we have women watching and so we want to find out like, what's their point of view? So like, you know, uh, in the matchmaking industry, there are some people who doesn't want that. Mm. And so like, you know, I can understand that because that's their value. But of course, there are some people who, you know, just fine with them, you know, they don't care because like, you know, uh, that's what the woman want. And yeah. so, yeah, it's, a, you know, it's a, something to, uh, you know, look into because like I'm sure a lot of men haven't even thought about that, you know, once you put, you know, like I put you on the spot when I ask you that. So, yeah, you know, uh, I have that in my uh you know, dating uh, profile for men and women, uh, you know, they have something like yeah. an enhancement. Like, you know, it's not only the women who has en body en enhancements, like, you know, even men, men also do that. Right. So um, as far as like, you know, uh, deal breakers, do you have any specific, uh, you know, top three deal breakers? Right, so I mentioned what is the number one deal breaker for me. So that cuts off a lot of the market when it comes to dating from the start. But I just want somebody who's humble. Like I, I try to be humble. I try to be pure in heart and treat people with love and respect. So I'm looking for someone who walks in humility and kindness and love as well. So if I come up against somebody where I see that they don't have those qualities, I would say that's a deal breaker. Okay, got it. So um, let's say uh, you are in a relationship. Do you believe like, you know, 50-50 sharing of household expenses with a romantic partner is the way you go? Or like, you know, uh, you're uh, the traditional like, oh, okay, I'm the guy. I'm going to be providing for you. Mm. Well, I'm, I like the idea of like we're going out on a date and I'm suggesting that we're going to a place. I like the idea of paying and being the one to put my card down. Absolutely. Now, if you're, if you're married to someone, you're in a long-term relationship, I think that's open to negotiation. Uh, if the woman has more earning power than the man, I mean, perhaps you give or you contribute to the relationship in proportion to your earning power so that there's equity. I think that's the word people like to use, equity when it comes to that. That sound, I just wanna do what's fair. I don't want anybody to feel stressed or uncomfortable if there's a lifestyle um, that both people want to be able to live. Finding the way that is achievable for both people in the relationship without straining their finances. Okay. And so, um, do you think, like, you know, as a man, are you going to be okay with somebody who's earning much more than you? Yeah, I would, I would hope that my wife is more successful than me, and I'm having to chase after her. Okay. All right, that's good. Like, you know, that's very supportive, more or less, because, like, you know, women have dreams, too. And so, like, you cannot stop it because, like, you know, that's the, where the culture is going. Like, you know, uh, men, I mean, women just want to be proving themselves as well. And yeah. so, yeah, you know, there are some uh, women who are so career driven. And so they have reached the peak of their career. And then, you know, they just want to be like, you know, also... Uh, be able to uh, do whatever they want and also like, you know, be uh, independent, but somehow, yeah. of course, like having a, somebody who is a partner for them for, you know, the rest of their life. And then I think like, you know, uh, that's going to be a good, you know, idea for women who are listening. There are men just, just like Samuel, who wants to be like, you know, um, accepting you for who you are. And so um, what are your expectations as far as relationships are concerned? Mm expectations 
you know, if you'd allow me, I think I want to share a scripture because I think it describes like what people really want when it comes to love. Mm -hmm. um, but most people don't exactly know how to quantify it. Okay. So it's in 1 Corinthians. Mm. So 1 Corinthians 13 verses 4 through 8 says this, Love is patient and love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrongdoing. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects. It always trusts. Always hopes. Always perseveres. Love never fails. Okay. So if you think about that, all of the different characteristics that were described there, that's what we want in love, right? We want someone who is patient, someone who's kind, who is not envious of us if we're more successful, as you just mentioned, um, someone who's not proud or dishonoring to your partner, is not selfish or self-seeking um, or easily angered or frustrated um, or keeps records of wrongdoings and holds on to bitterness. We want someone who delights in the truth, right? Who always hopes and sees the best and perseveres through the difficulties in relationship. And we want someone who holds on till the end. At least I do. So my expectation is that I would uphold what is written in this scripture and that the person that I'm with would be trying to live up to that same standard. Okay. So uh, I guess like um, you just want to find that specific woman who's going to be like that for a long, long time. Because like, you know, there's a commitment over there when, <laughs> when you're reading that. There is a, like, you know, um, seems like till death do us part, seriously. <laughs> well, when you get married, what do your vows say? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Till death do us part. So the question isn't, you know, whether I'm someone who's um, an extremist when it comes to that, but do people really believe or understand the sanctity of marriage when they're making those vows. I think that's more the question that needs to be asked. And so you asked me earlier, it's like, you know, what do you think about dating in Chicago? And I said, there's tons to do and there's plenty of beautiful people out there. I think what we have an issue with as a culture um, is that we are always looking for a place where the grass is greener on the other side. So when we come up against the slightest bit of friction in a relationship, People think that it's easier for you to abort the relationship or leave than it is to persevere through the relationship. And you have to ask people, take a poll, does that make people happier living that way? Or are couples that have really learned to love each other through uh, their differences and learned to understand um, and humble themselves, are they the ones who are long-term happier? So, I don't know, these are just questions. I think it's, it's up to everybody to decide for themselves. Um, but we live in a society now uh, where I think we have things upside down as far as how our priorities should be with relationships. And that's why a lot of young people like myself, myself are alone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so um, did you, uh, how did you end up you know, uh, being in this uh, particular um, church that you're going to? Uh, well... <laughs> I think during COVID, it changed a lot of things because people weren't going to, to church in person. And so it gave me a lot of time to reevaluate what I wanted in a church community um, and how church really should be. So I just spend time with people. I have people over my house. I don't think you need to be in a church building to be part of a body of Christ. I think the, I mean, the Holy Spirit the, the, the spirit of Christ is with us wherever we go, and you can host that in your home. And I think I, I may have mentioned this to you. I've been going to a home ministry um, in Jefferson Park with people that now I consider my godparents for the last seven years. And we've had up to 50 people in the home at one time. We have meals every week, and Filipinos love to eat and eat well. And we worship God. We share the gospel. We love on each other. That's what I consider church. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so uh, I'm sure like, you know, it was just recent. So how did your, uh, you know, uh, friends uh, adjust to your new beliefs and as well as like, you know, maybe your ex-girlfriends? Well, I would say everybody that I've been with, wh whether you've been a friend or a girl that I've dated knows m my belief in God and my love for Jesus. That's never waned. I think there have been times in my life where my commitment 
um, to the standard of what I ex expectation and excellence as a believer has waned. Um, but that's not a reflection on God. That's a reflection on me. And so what I've just been working on the last few years is being congruent on the outside, the way that I live my life, the way that I treat people with my, my value system, right, in a way that glorifies God in everything that I do. Okay, that sounds great. So uh, thank you so much again for being over here. So for those people who are uh, watching, if you are an expert on love, dating, and relationships, or if you are single uh, trying to navigate love, just uh, send me a holler. We want to have you over here. And I'll see you next time. Thank you again. Yeah.